How much more time, Lord, will it be until we are with you? How much time, Lord, will it be until we are in the kingdom or washed clean of the particles of this existence and into the kingdom of paradise with you to walk in peace and love forever and ever? How much longer, Lord, will it be until we see you, to see your face, to see your glory? How much longer, Lord, will it be until we find you and see you and want you? How much longer, Lord, will it take, God? We long to be with you, Lord. We long to see you, God. We long to feel your Holy Spirit. We long to feel the Holy Spirit's touch. We long to hear the Holy Spirit, what the Holy Spirit thinks, what the Holy Spirit wants us to know through revelation and prophecy. Help us, Lord, through the grace of the Holy Spirit to find you and to see you and to want you. We need you so badly, Lord. We live in a world of depravity. We live in a world of media, of constant media, of constant addiction to our phones and to our tablets and to our internet and to our news and to everything that we see, God. We long to be with you. We know that it disconnects us, God, and we know that, and we want to, to decipher what is right and what is wrong. We thank you, God, for the existence, Lord. We, we live to help each other. We live to lift each other up, God. Why is it, Lord, that we live in a world where the ruling class decides what we want and what we want to know and what we want to think? Why is it that the ruling class is telling us what is right and what is wrong? Why is the ruling class telling that things that don't make sense make sense? Because we have to think about what we're looking at. We live in a world of depravity, Lord, and we just ask you, God, to help us, God, to fill us, God, with your glory. The Lord is my shepherd, and I shall lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters, and God restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk in the shadow of the valley of death, I will fear no evil because God is with me. His rod and staff, they comfort me. He prepares a table for me in the presence of my enemies as he anoints my head with oil. Surely goodness and loving kindness will follow me all days of my life and I will dwell in God's house forever. Holy Spirit, be with us. Holy Spirit, if people are hearing my voice at this very moment, be with them and touch them and see them. Be with them, Father. Holy Spirit, be with them. Love them and see them. Guide them, God, in their hearts. Guide them in their words, God. Help them find peace, God, in this world of chaos. Help them find peace, Lord, in a world of corruption, God. Help us find peace, Lord, in a world of depravity and greed. Help us, Lord, find a way, Lord. Sustain us, God. Fill us, God, and give us your glory, God. Help us, Lord, in the days ahead, God, as we walk through the light, as we walk through the darkness, as we see you, God. As we walk through the valley of darkness, God, be with us, God, because we know that you are here with us. And we know it won't be before long before we will be with you. And this world will be just an instant. We thank you for the life you give us, God. And we ask you, God, to help us, God. To fill us, God. And to greet, to be with you in the greatest moments of our, our existence, God. To be with you, Father. We know, Lord, that you are here with us, Lord. In this prophetic painting, I wanted to talk about Lonnie Frisbee. He seems to be a hot topic in these days because of the movie Jesus Rev Revolution. I've never seen the movie and I've only seen Lonnie Frisbee's face. I've never really understood the Jesus movement of the 60s. But I can kind of empathize with how they were feeling at the time when there was such chaos in that time and it just shows you that chaos is never going to leave us it's always going to be here but we have Jesus to fall back on and for me Lonnie is a figure that I can relate to as far as my journey in drugs and art I took LSD I smoked weed I'm an artist I draw I paint I have a passion for painting and that's what Lonnie did I heard a story where him and his friends climbed a mountain and he had a suitcase with him and uh, they got to the top of the mountain and he opened up his suitcase and he had oil paints and he had acid and he had weed and he started painting a life-size portrait of Jesus on the rock and then they dropped acid and they read the Bibles and they gave their lives to God 
And so many people are, are so hungry for God and they don't know it. Because at the time, you have to look at the time period of the 60s where the Beatles were like ingrained in that culture. They're the ones who introduced LSD. And it was actually the CIA, the CIA who created LSD and kind of put it out into the world. And it was the Beatles who made it mainstream and made it okay. And then you had Leary and, and all these guys saying, tune in, drop out. Um, and so you also had the Vietnam War, which was a war that was, we were, the Americans were fighting because we are Team America and we come to save the day. And so he, he was living in a time period, much like we're living in now, where we're almost experiencing the same things. But they were hungry for God. They were hungry for something that they were designed to be. And so I believe that Lonnie came in a time where it was important for people to understand who God was through a man who looked like Jesus, or through a man who said, you know, it, it, the people say I look like Jesus, so I couldn't think of another person that I would want to look like. And so when they said he preached, the Holy Spirit came down. When he said, when he started healing, people were getting healed. And so I was really, didn't understand it until now because of this movie, Jesus Revolution, which I really don't plan on seeing, but I'm not really much into movies these, these days, but I know that it's his memory is being seeped into YouTube and the interviews and, and the documentaries and all the, um, all the attention that he's getting, that his spirit is getting, is it's like it's almost like his memory is getting resurrected again, in, into a new era, and it seems like God is like opening up something right now. He's opening up um, an awakening, opening up an awakening for young people to let them know how how real he is and how good he is. When I was a catechist in the Catholic Church, I was I would evangelize to these kids, and um, so. After I was evangelizing to them, I went into the bathroom, and then when I was in the bathroom, the Holy Spirit says, I want you to tell them that Jesus is coming back. And in my mind, I said, when I went out there again, in my mind, in my flesh mind, I was like, that's impossible for Jesus to come back. But, but I was, I rebuked, I was, I rebuked that spirit because it's not a flesh, it's a spirit. It's a spirit through men, it's a spirit through, through mankind. Lonnie walked the walk, and he walked, and he talked the talk. But he also was a sinner, just like we were. He he was a backslider, just like we are. I'm a backslider. I was a backslider, and I can I can tell you that when you backslide, you think that you're okay. When you backslide, you say, "I'm just going to do this one thing and reward myself for all the work I've done, and God will understand." And so when I backslid, I did that one thing, which was, at the time, I started taking CBD because I realized that it's legal, so if it's legal, then it must be okay with God. And then I found this stuff called D8THC, which is a derivative of the, the hemp plant, but they extract the THC element to where you feel almost like you're actually smoking weed. And I started taking that. <clears throat> thinking that God is okay with that because I've been such a good follower and such a good disciple of his word that he's, he'll be okay with that. And so when I started taking that D8, I started getting addicted to it. And then I started taking it on a regular basis to the point where I was addicted to it again. And I backslid. I backslid so far that I convinced myself that it was okay because this was a time during the pandemic and people were getting locked down and things were changing and I I I didn't go to church anymore. I didn't I didn't um pick up my bible anymore and I was looking for a way to medicate myself. So I started taking this D8 THC and it was like a period of like almost a year I was taking this and I needed it to feel good about myself. I needed it. And then 
when I started going back to church, I started going to a non-denominational church, and we were praying, and the guy next to me was praying for me, and he says, you're hiding something from God. And I knew immediately what it was. It was my use of the D8THC. So I was like, well, I take CBD, maybe that's it. And the guy who was praying for me didn't understand what that was. He didn't know. And I was just trying to kid myself. Okay, go, well, that's, you know, that can't be it. So during that week, I was, I was low on my D8. And I was planning on getting some more. So when I was pulling out of my parking lot, going to work, I was planning on getting it the next day. And when a thought came into my head that I was going to get some more, thunder clapped so hard it shook my car. And it scared me. And I knew right then and there that that was God talking to me, saying, you need to stop this because I'm going to use you in ways that you need to be level-headed and you need to be clear-minded. So I really, I kind of, you know, I was still in the addiction mode, so I didn't think too much of it. And then I had a little bit left. And so when I came home and I took the last little bit that I had, as soon as it started taking effect, the same thing. Thunder hit my house so hard, it shook the house and it scared my wife. And right then and there, that was God talking to me saying, you need to stop this. Because the Holy Spirit told me before, you need to wean yourself off this because they're going to be using you. And I, I got off of it, but I didn't have any support. So when I went back to the non-denominational church, that's when it was reassurance to me that I needed to stop. So I stopped. I stopped using it. And of course, there's going to be withdrawals. But once you get over those withdrawals, your head's clear, your mind's clear, you get over it, you're working, you're praying, you're in relationship with God again, the Holy Spirit is touching me. The Holy Spirit is talking to me. The Holy Spirit is guiding me. And I have a clear mind and clear thoughts. I don't feel paranoia. I don't feel anxiety. I have nothing but God in my heart. And God is blessing me. And he sees it. And I will never go back to it again. Never. And it's a hard thing to say something like that because you never know. You never know if there's temptation down the road. Another thing, too, is masturbation. Masturbation is wrong. I dislocated my thumb because I disobeyed God on that, that one thing. Because he's telling me that's wrong, too. And... I'm going to tell you something. When you go in the Catholic Church and you go to confession and you, you confess that you masturbate, they don't say anything. It's almost like they're condoning it. But but back from, away from that, Lonnie had problems too. Lonnie had fleshly desires. Lonnie had things, and he he is a man just like us. But but I don't know what he if he repented. He had to have repented. He had to have. He had to have. And I know that. In our lives, we, we come across paths of temptation, and we need to overcome those. So, Lord, I just pray, Lord, that everyone watching this right now gets touched by your glory, gets touched by this testimony, gets touched by the prophecy that God is coming back, gets touched. In Jesus' mighty name.